Next up, let's create the user section. And we saw this in our demo application. The user section will be completely lazy loaded. So none of those assets are loaded until we visit something slash users slash whatever is under that section of our application. Since we already have the header open, let's create a router link for the user section. All right, so we have our users link here. Let's inspect element and let's zoom out a little bit console. Now watch this. As soon as I click home contact, cool users, we're going to get an error and angular lets us know cannot match any routes. URL segment users does not exist. And that makes sense because we haven't created this user section just yet. We'll close this out and come back over to our terminal. Now, this is where more modules comes into play. We have our main app module, which sits at the top level of our application. We're going to need a users module if we want to lazy load that section. NGG module users. Now we created source app users users module right here. Oh, we actually goofed up. There's no routing here and we need the users module section to have its own router. So we're going to delete this. And then let's do the same thing, but dash dash routing. Okay, now we have users. It has its own router. This entire section of our site will have its own compartmentalized module and its own router. Let's create two components. We're going to say ngg component. And the way we can get users components to be inside of this users module is just users forward slash user list. ngg component users slash user single. And that's for the page that's going to show all users and then also a page that's going to show a single user. All right, so now we have this entire module section. Let's make sure that our routes are existing for this users routing section. We'll have path is nothing. Component is user list component. And then also one for a path is colon username. And that's how we do route parameters in Angular. We're going to have colon username because this path is usually going to be something like slash users slash Chris on code. And this variable is what we need to pull out of the URL. And this is how we tell Angular to do it. We're going to say component is user single component. Notice I'm not doing users here or users slash username. And that's because our top level app router is going to be having that slash users section. All this stuff here is relative to this users module. And that's why we don't put slash users here. So we go back into app routing module. This is how we start to lazy load sections of our application. Now, normally you would go into app module and load up the modules imports. So we'd say users module, but we don't want that because if we put it here, that means it automatically gets loaded when our application loads. So we don't want to register it just yet. Let's close that. Under app routing, we're going to have path users component, but we're not using the component. We're using a whole module. We're going to use load children. And then instead of passing in the actual component itself, we're going to pass in a string. So when Angular sees this string and says load children, it will go and find the module and then load it on demand. We'll do this from the source folder app users, users.module, hashtag users module. And I think that's users.module. Yep. And the last thing I want to add that I forgot to add earlier up here on our home component, we want path match to be full. And that's because it's matching this blank path. But now we have two blank paths. We have one under the users and one under the home page. So this could fire twice. By saying path match full, it makes sure that it's only for the home page slash nothing right there. All right, so save that. And now that should be everything we need for lazy loading a whole section of our website. I know that was a lot to do, but if you think about it, really all we did was generate a module, two components, set up our router, and then our main 
top level router, we just said load children and Angular handles all that lazy loading for us. So let's go take a look, make sure it works. We have our homepage, open up network tab for JavaScript, inline polyfill styles, everything we expect here. Contact works. Now, as soon as I click users, we should see that users.chunk. Let's go users. Users.module.chunk user list works. Very nice. And then if we have a user here, so username, so slash Chris on code, which is my Twitter handle, enter user single works as well. So now we have both components being used. User module chunk only gets loaded if we're slash users on our route. And that's a really great way for Angular to handle lazy loading for us. And if you have uh, a couple errors showing when you click that users, make sure you try and restart ng serve. Uh, we did a lot of new files, new components. So Angular CLI might need to restart to register all those good things. All right, that's enough for our router and our new user section. I wanna take a step back now and let's talk about the foundations of Angular. And I'll, we'll just have, instead of slides, we're gonna do this right in our editor. So the way that Angular works is it has a couple different concepts around it. And the first one is going to be modules. Now modules are gonna be the way that we can organize parts of our Angular applications into sections. And if we open up app module and zoom out, since that is giant, let's zoom out a little, okay. Now what happens here is we have our imports, our ES6 imports. And you'll see a lot of ES6 imports in Angular. You'll see it a lot in React. That's just the way that the JavaScript world is moving. And I really like the import statements because instead of just trying to grab things globally, like if you're using jQuery, you just use dollar sign and maybe you didn't load the jQuery library yet, dollar sign wouldn't work. But here we'll know exactly what we're using. Now declarations, we're using app component. Imports are the modules we're importing. Providers are services and bootstrap is what's going to start our application. So I know that sounds like a lot, but really an ng module, and this is what's called a decorator, and a decorator is a way we can add extra metadata to this class. So instead of configuring all this stuff inside the class, we can say declarations here, we're just adding a decorator here, so this kind of tells this class what it's going to be using. So we have our main app module, and this is where we're going to register everything for this main part of our application. Now, the cool thing is, is you noticed that when we did our demo, the user section was lazy loaded. We told the user section, hey, load this users module, which we'll create in a later lesson. And that's how lazy loading works. These modules help Angular to know what sections are what in our application. So if we want to use something, just remember to register it in a module, and then our Angular will know that it exists and know how to use it. Let's step forward into our component. And here is our component template right here. And actually, let's show this off. We're going to open up our, well, let's exit out of this. And I want to use the built-in VS Code terminal. Now, my Angular site, the way that we run an Angular application, if you're using the Angular CLI, is ng serve. Now the Angular CLI went and served our application. It built out five files, inline, main, polyfill, styles, and vendor. And then we can go over to our Chrome localhost 4200 is where our Angular app gets started. And here is our main app component. You can see welcome to app. Let's split this out to the right. We'll split this out to the left. Close that, close this. And the cool thing about the Angular CLI, as soon as we save any files, it will automatically update the browser. So this is our full template, and this is a lot of stuff here. We're not even gonna need this. Let's delete all of this. And the router outlet is needed. That's where our routes are gonna get output to. And we're gonna say, hello, I am an Angular application. And for fun, let's do an emoji for fire. Save and then watch the right side immediately get updated. So Angular CLI handles all of this for us. It's using Webpack under the web. It's using Webpack Dev Server to do all of this hot reloading and fun stuff. So that's what the Angular CLI does for us, right? We start up our application with one line 
and then we serve it with one line and then we can just start working and it automatically updates. But this is going to be the foundation for an Angular component. We have our component decorator and then we have our component class and our template. And we'll see how we can build out more components really soon, but components are a really good way to build up our application into modularized parts. And then we'll look at our app routing module, const routes. This is where we're gonna be writing out our routes. And the cool thing about TypeScript, if you're not sold on TypeScript, and I wasn't at first, but now I'm a really big fan of TypeScript. Where did that come from? TypeScript, by typing things, it helps you to find errors quickly. And also it self-documents your code. So you know that these this routes, and you could totally do it without the typings, right? Well, you can say just const routes is equal to, uh, I don't know, let's write in some random path is going to be blank and the component we're gonna use. And here, let's talk about component name. We'll say home component. And that'll be something we build, right? But if we don't know what's going on in this routes, okay, path, component name, this probably won't work because it won't work. We would have to go into the Angular documentation, find the routes documentation, and figure out exactly what to call this route, how we would create this route. But since we had routes here, and we'll click Save, Angular and TypeScript can tell us that we're already making errors. So if I hover over this, it'll say, component name is not assignable to a route. Oh, okay, well, let's try a component. Okay, so we'll delete that. Component is now normal, no errors there. If we go to home component, cannot find name home component. So this TypeScript is really, really good at finding errors for us before we actually go to our browser and have to inspect element over there. So if we do this and I start typing, let's delete that. If I start typing in component, Angular and TypeScript already know, hey, do you wanna use component? So this is what we call self-documenting and the typings from TypeScript help us build faster. So we'll say, okay, I want component, home component, and we haven't defined that yet, but that's kind of the idea behind TypeScript is by using types and saying, oh, this is gonna be of type routes, this array, it helps us to build faster because our documentation is right in our editor. So that's the routing module. And then notice we have the router module. We're exporting the routing module. And if we go back to, I don't, do I need to save that? Yeah, I do need to save that. So let's save this, close that, close a couple more things. And let's go back into app module. Notice that our app routing module is here. So this ng module, this main app module is where we register everything and we'll see that soon. So this is kind of the foundation of an Angular application. You have modules, you have components, and all of those get put together to build out our app.